Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 11th episode of the Short Explanation Podcast. My name is Hiam. Tom is there. And we have a sponsorship. We are sponsored today by Short Explanations. We provide free credit monitoring. All your credit monitoring for free. Just join our signal group. We'll tell you how to do it. It's free. Everything is free. And we provide the best credit monitoring, as you will see. So if you have credit, uh, it is monitored. So on today's episode, we want to talk about unneeded security, I guess. That's the best thing. Tom likes to call them annoyances, but these are like the five or six things that we listed here that you should not worry about, right? I mean, we've done these before. Uh, yeah, so we've we've seen a lot recently um and honestly it's been going on forever um various virus scanning apps and oh protect your phone and oh this vpn will protect you from hackers and oh this is military grade uh and ah you absolutely need this credit monitoring and oops sorry we lost all your data and you can't do anything about it but here's three months of a product that may or may not do literally anything for you uh and could make the problem worse and so i mean let's, we're just kind of sick of it so let's start with the very big one is virus scanning. So unfortunately, I still hear and I get this question all the time. Which virus scanning app do I need? And the answer is you don't need any. Literally, you don't need any. If you have Windows, uh, Windows Defender is the only thing you need. And just set it run to update or just do it. Just let it do its thing. Nothing special. If you think you did something wrong, then run it, but just let it do its thing. That's it. On OS X, uh, Mac has something that happens when it runs, but it's not, there's no viruses for Macs. I mean, really, there aren't. Um, Linux, there's even less viruses for Linux, so we're not too worried about that. But just in general, you don't need any virus scanning app. Like, you just don't. That's it. No more. Uninstall. So a lot of computers, especially like new laptops and stuff you buy, will come with trials of McAfee or Norton or another big name, big box antivirus platform software thing. Um, and it will constantly yell at you and all of your family members to, oh, your protection is running out. Your computer is completely vulnerable to hackers, viruses, spyware, Trojans, and uh, strep throat. If you don't pay us, $60 a year for the privilege of protecting you. Um, and honestly, Windows Defender does a fine job. Um, I have had way more system problems from Norton or McAfee uh, than I have ever had from Windows Defender or even viruses themselves. Um, so uh, honestly, operating systems today, they generally keep themselves safe. They update their virus definitions. They check out suspicious files. When you double click on stuff, it runs it through a quick scan most of the time anyway. Um, you know, with Apple pushing people to download things from the App Store, um, you know, those... I'm not going to say that everything is safe on there, but there is a process. It is harder to get a virus through Apple's verification process than it is to just you know, drop a DMG file somewhere on the internet and hope somebody clicks it, right? Like, it's, it's better. It's not perfect, and we shouldn't pretend that it's perfect, but it is going to be safer. Um, you know, uh, for Linux systems, if you're running a Linux on the desktop or if you're running a Chromebook, congratulations you probably know enough to keep yourself out of trouble. Uh, for the Chromebook in particular, Google does a fine job at just keeping that thing up to date. Every time I open up a Chromebook, there is a new update that says, oh, here, click this one button and wait 30 seconds and you're fine. Um, and that's really all you have to do. Um, I would go through the effort of actually removing McAfee, Norton especially, uh, from family members' computers just because they're heavy. They take up a lot of system resources. Uh, you know, real talk, just getting rid of McAfee or Norton can actually make your old computer feel significantly newer uh, because there's just less junkware to run. I've always told people that exactly. If, if you have a need for a virus, scan, like you're at a public library, whatever it is, that's one thing. But even there, I probably wouldn't do it. But if you're constantly running the, just the performance loss all the time, every day every time you did this is a problem if you just did all the steps that we've talked about to keep your files safe have them in some sort of online cloud thing whatever it is let it do its version control 
it will and you lost something like if you just went through the backup process and you lost something due to ransomware or whatever it is and you have a copy just reinstalling everything is just as fast it'll take you a couple hours but by the way running that virus scan on full scan will also take you a couple hours and by the way the viruses now also know to the first thing to do is attack the virus scan so if you make it look like there's no problem there's no problem. The other thing is malware is is defined differently than a virus scan. So you need a malware scanner. And then this malware wants to does is is adware and all these other things. So you need you need like a whole suite of things that you have to do. And then the other thing is like you said, if you don't remove it, you have to constantly pay money. Having a one month old virus scan is essentially useless because people know this and they're going to they're going to take the new attacks. They're going to change it just enough to get past the virus scan. So saying, well, it's only one month old or two months old is not a big deal. No, it is. So you're wasting your time, the performance, and everything else, and then you're and then you're a month behind, and people know this. Like you won't get the Melissa virus, but. I don't think anybody will get the Melissa virus at this point. That's a blast from the past. Uh, so back in the day, the differences between, you know, worms, viruses, Trojans, malware, like all, all this stuff, uh, maybe not malware, that's generally an overarching classification. Uh, like there, there are legitimate technical academic differences between the types of unwanted software. Um, you know, spyware, adware, potentially unwanted software. Like there's there's lots of different classifications. The only thing you have to know is that it's all malware, right? It's all software that you don't want. Um, and no matter which product you pick, Malwarebytes, Norton, McAfee, it's just sticking with the defaults, Windows Defender, uh, Apple's built-in protection, uh, Linux systems is just you running a Linux kernel on people and generally not bothering for the most part. Um, they generally take care of everything. You don't need a hundred products to do a hundred things. They all kind of work within the same domain of malware. Um, but, you know, way back in the day, they tried to sell you 90 different products for 90 different things. Uh, and it largely created a giant industry for the most part. Uh, today, you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's, it's become a problem because I do hear people call me. I, I need a virus. Game. No, you just need to not do bad things. I mean, essentially it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, all of them are going to give you that they're, they're going to, you're going to download something. It's going to say, are you sure you want to download this? If there is, if they have their own white, uh, they'll have their own allowed deny list of all the bad things, but, you to get a virus i think nowadays you have to actively work for it i, I really think so it's it's you're gonna go do something that you shouldn't be doing usually installing some program you shouldn't be running or or trying to steal content that you shouldn't be stealing and then it's gonna infect you that way or you're gonna click on a phishing email that's that's probably targeted just for you because i think now because every pdf's now open in the browser nobody sends exec files anymore i mean we don't send them so it's just malicious excel files i guess and that's why we have phishing protection for it so are you gonna get can you get caught with a virus yes absolutely but having the virus scan is not is not gonna stop like it's not gonna stop you i mean and let's say it finds a virus the problem is you don't know if it fully removed it that that's the next problem so now you have this other problem is it still there is it like hiding is it dormant until something happens and then it's gonna grant somewhere my computer you don't know and so one of those things is if you're gonna the the big players or windows defender does a good enough job and it doesn't slow your computer down so it's you might as well just focus on having your backups to move off uh, yeah and generally if you experience a malware infection like that it's probably a decent enough idea to just wipe your system restore from backup anyway um the most common types of attacks today are going to be like account takeover stuff something that doesn't rely on your local machine for local threats you're probably dealing with ransomware that's going to be the number one thing because uh it's effective it's easy to code um i know i i coded one uh and trashed it 
Um, so don't worry, I'm not like some evil malware author. But I wanted to see how easy it was to write crypto ransomware. Turns out it's fairly trivial. Uh, maybe a week's worth of work, uh, even two weeks. There's even open source platforms that allow you to generate you know, your own crypto ransomware uh, in just a couple clicks. Um, kind of terrifying, but that's generally the level of threat we're dealing with today. Um, so having good backups is really the best panacea for that, right? Even if Windows Defender can understand that something has gone horribly wrong uh, and that um, you have been infected by crypto ransomware, rolling back that encryption may not be trivial. And in a lot of cases, it may be just downright impossible due to how the malware is built. Uh, so having good backups is going to get you out of trouble. Make sure you do that first and foremost. And I'll say finally, if you haven't reinstalled your operating system in a long time, it is really easy. Like it, it is extremely easy. The drivers, no, we're not talking about printers, but the drivers for literally everything else are just there. So if you just focus on the files, and remember, we talked about this in the backup episode. If you're renting your music from Spotify or Google Music or wherever, Apple Music or wherever, it's it's already there. Your photos, yes, you have to focus on. And if they're in Apple's photo stream or Google Photos, they're already in the cloud. So it's just really your files and some and some documents. And if you throw that into OneDrive, which Microsoft gives you, or iCloud, which Apple gives you, or or you pay for a service or you use Google or whatever it is, it's just there. They're there for you. And they do have version control. So you don't have to worry about a ransomware taking that over because it is version controlled. With that said, this is not like some vaccine that says oh i don't have to do it because i have version control on my stuff you still have to think about what you're doing but again throw that old methodology out and say hey it's really easy to install i just have to focus on securing these files and i'll be good so i think we should move on i think we've said yeah. enough about that in kind of the same vein are phone scanning apps and especially phone virus protection now all this stuff uh, is generally a scam. So the way phone apps generally work today on uh, Android and iOS is that uh, they're packaged in a way that uh, they're basically containerized to a decent extent, um, and they can sign up for permissions to do things like, hey, if you need to access photos, like let's say you have a cool new camera app with a bunch of filters and stuff, cool. It's going to need to at least store pictures somewhere, if not downright you know, view your pictures for editing purposes or what have you, right? But there are only certain bespoke ways that the operating system developers allow an app to actually get into your operating system. And antivirus classically worked on system-wide heuristics, which is it looked at the entire system um, with, you know, root access, admin access, basically the, the deepest level of access that an application can be given on a, a home PC um, to watch everything that was going on. Um, and on your phones, anything you install from the iOS or, or Apple App Store um, or Google Play, it's not going to have that root access. By default, <laughs> Google does, or and Apple especially, does not let applications get root access to your device. It's something you have to hack in yourself. Um, so how does a virus scan work if it doesn't have access to actually scan for viruses? It keeps a list. One of the permissions it asks for is, hey, can you give me a list of stuff installed on your phone? Um, and it'll, it could yell at you for things like, apps being out of date or, you know, if you download the one thing or the three things that it's got on its no-no list, then yeah, it can flag that. But otherwise, literally the only thing it's doing, it's a checkbox. It's it's a list of applications that are known to be bad or known to have issues. Uh, and then it just flags based on that. It's not doing anything crazy. It's not doing anything deep. And the worst part is a lot of these you pay for. So if you have antivirus on your phone, just uninstall it. It's not doing anything for you. Uh, Google and Apple both take care of their platforms. You don't have to worry about it. They do their own kind of antivirus stuff in the background and stuff that, you know, actually works and has enough teeth to uninstall applications. Um, but yeah, phone antivirus, don't even bother. The thing you can do instead of having the antivirus on your phone. So the other thing other than that list is that it checks for permissions. So I probably does every week it throws up a notification. These apps have your camera permission. Do you want me to uncheck it? Maybe it does something like that, 
But again, it's not doing anything you can't do. Google and Apple both regularly run their entire app stores through virus scanning. And if it finds something, I think they just pull it off your phone. I think that's what they do. I mean, if it yeah. violates the terms of service, they can pull it off your phone. If it's bad enough, Google and Apple both do have remote delete capabilities just in case something goes really wild. I, I remember correctly, I believe Google did employ that when some of the earlier Android malware was going on. It's But basically, they're not doing anything. What you do have to worry about is you have an app that has been in the, in the App Store for some length of time, a year, two years, five years, and the developer sells it to a company that a couple months down the road decide to to become malicious. So for months, they issue some updates to keep the developer on for a little bit to get to buy and trust, and then all of a sudden they start spamming you. But so the first time something happens, again, people will report it as spam and Google will then take a look at it. So they have just a short amount of time to do it. Usually it's notification spam. And there are spammy apps that follow whatever rule, but usually once those are on your phone, you will get, I don't know if you will get a notification, but Google will kick that off and it won't let you update and whatever else. But but if it, if it's if it's looking to extort you, as long as it, it has to extort you the right way by following all their rules. They can't just mine Bitcoin on your phone in the background. Like You can't do that. There have been apps that have tried. Um, if something is using your machine to mine cryptocurrency, you'll probably notice because that is a very hefty operation and it can slow your system down. Uh, especially if you try it on a mobile device, it will very much tank your uh, your performance and battery life. So, so the thing know. with all these apps to focus on is if first go through your go through your phone. If you're not using an app, you're not using it, delete it. Second, don't download apps that just repeat functionality. Both of the, both both platforms have a flashlight app. Use that one. Both phones have a weather app. Use that one. Don't. Both phones have all these same capabilities. If you're doing an app that copies exactly that capability, there's probably a reason there. And then we tell you look at the number of reviews and the star ratings. Unfortunately, now even with thousands of reviews, like I said, the developer will sell it. It becomes scammy that way. But focus. If you're going to download an app, make sure you know what you're doing. Anything that asks for weekly or monthly bills, make sure you know what you're paying for. Because now we're seeing $9.99 a week for just nothing. And it follows the rules. You can do it. You have to check it. But be aware of that. So, I mean, again, nowadays everything is an in-app purchase for a month uh, at a monthly subscription. So just make sure you're not wasting your money that way. And always remember, like, this is just general good life advice. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you are downloading, like, if you're a Fortnite mega fan and you are downloading free vbucks.pdf.exe, yeah, that's probably too good to be true and you're probably going to end up with a busted system or hacked accounts or something, right? Just don't do it. it think about it. If it makes sense, Cool. Uh, but if something does sound too good to be true, it probably is. Like, I don't want to stop you from crushing candies. Absolutely not. You want to crush candies? Crush candies. Um, but but this is an unnecessary expense. I mean, I'd much rather you go out and buy a Nintendo Switch and buy a couple of cool games for it. I mean, even if you can get the Mario game, it'll give you hours and hours of gameplay. You'll enjoy yourself. Like if you want a mobile game, just make sure you know what you're doing. If if you're paying to tweet or you're paying for this thing, just make sure you know what you're doing. Is this a necessary expense? Because one of my side jobs is finance is looking at at least thinking about finances, and this is like the number one growing category people are spending their money on. You don't need virus scan on the phone. You don't need to pay them to scan your apps. Your job and Apple and Google both do this. They'll notify you about the permissions. Hey, did you know this will happen? They'll say, we notice that you use the weather app all the time and it's it's pinging your location. Is that okay? And if it's not, they tell you how to go and do it. Just once a month, every other month, figure that out and uninstall apps and you'll be it'll be much better. 
And speaking of things that you might be paying for that you probably shouldn't have to be paying for, um, if thanks to the modern data economy, if you are paying for any kind of identity protection or credit monitoring services, well, guess what? Your data has already been leaked and hacked by 17 other companies, every single one of which is giving you a free year of identity and credit monitoring. You don't have to pay for that. So... What I wanted, so it took me years to, to get this, but the credit cards all have apps that will lock your credit, like will lock your credit. So your something happens, you can lock your credit card. So you lose your credit card, you think something's up, you don't know where it is, you see an error in charge, lock the credit card until you solve that problem. That's, that's right based in the app. If you need your credit monitoring, uh, the bureaus offer one free credit monitoring thing, free credit report a year. So every every four months, get the get one of the three because they'll generally show up. I think Credit Karma is free. It's not an ad. I don't. I think that it's free. But my credit my credit cards, all three of them that I have, three different companies, all say, "Hey, we're tracking your credit." I don't know how accurate it is, but they don't have to give you your FICO score. They just tell you, "Hey." Uh, we noticed this account or we noticed something happened. So the credit card apps are good. Uh, your identity, you do have to worry about your identity protection. Don't go around giving your social security number. But all these places that are hijacking and giving you free credit monitor, I can't see them working. I don't think any of them works. Tom always has a story he's going to tell us right now about how it doesn't work. But none of these, none of this works. I was I was hoping you were going to set that one up because I tell this story every single time and I just I love it because I love dunking on companies that just don't do a very good job. So let me tell you about LifeLock. I almost said Life Alert. Um, I have no experience. Life, with Alert Life Alert is the good company with the necklace that if your old family member falls down, it alerts you. That's a good. Well, yeah, I have no negative. I have no negative feelings about that company. But LifeLock, I do. It seems fine. Uh, LifeLock, absolutely. I have I have so many negative feelings on. Um, so way back in the day when the Sony PlayStation Network got hacked and all of our information went everywhere, um, I believe they gave every victim a year of LifeLock protection. Well, during that time, I actually was in the process, like even, even before this, I was looking around for new cars. Um, and I was actually in the process of moving apartments too. So there's a lot of credit checks, a lot of renter checks, a lot of running my social security number and credit through systems for cars and apartment stuff. And like, there was a lot of stuff going on with my identity and my credit. Uh, do you know how many times LifeLock caught that and called me? Do you know how many times that they, they just wanted to verify through an email and said, hey, Tom, did you go apply for, for financing at these dealerships or uh, get your credit checked at, at these residences? Uh, zero. None. When they asked me why I was not continuing their free trial uh, of LifeLock that Sony had so graciously provided me, uh, I let them know that because I did all of these things and no one caught any of it, um, probably wasn't worth me paying for literally nothing so lifelock yeah if you're paying for it get rid of it um if you're paying for other identity monitoring like if you're getting some side benefit out of it i don't want to tell you how to spend your money but i think there are better cheaper ways to do it especially if you're willing to put in even a modicum of effort like we said get your free credit monitoring or free credit report check it there are free ones uh your credit card will absolutely all like I said, all three of my credit cards will give me something like accounts or whatever it is, and and you should go from there. If you're really paranoid, you can call the credit bureaus and you can freeze your credit if you want. That's a royal pain. I I don't know if I want to recommend that to people because you literally at anybody that's looking for your credit hard or soft pull will not be able to. And so if you're looking for a car to rent, like. If you're in my life where I'm not buying cars, I'm not buying houses, I literally have no you. I'm not getting any more credit cards, nobody's running my credit, then maybe I'll do it. But I just have so many other ways to get alerts for this that I just choose not to. It's just not worth it. 
and people are not going after your credit. They're going at yes, they are trying to steal your identity, but they are not going after you specifically. So you're going to get a phishing email. You're going to get something else. Uh, you're going to get other ways, but through the internet blindly is probably not going to happen. Yeah, they're they're looking for fraud vectors, right? They're they're cloning cards. They're trying to open up new lines of credit on somebody else's account. These things happen. It's becoming more and more common. If you are caught up uh, in some issue with identity theft, um, you know, it it's terrible. And I, I do feel for you, but just understand, like, take solace in the fact that, unfortunately, it's not unique. Um, you, you are not a one-off. You are very far from the first person this has ever happened to. And there are resources out there that can help. Um, so... You know, it, unfortunately, it's becoming a more widespread deal. Um, but that does mean that there are more and more people and services to help you out of that situation. Turn on all the all the protections of the credit card. Anything where they say we want to send you a push notification when you purchase something, any of that stuff, because that's going to help you. It, it's being vigilant. If you have notifications for literally everything else, have these notifications on. So if you get something that says, hey, did you spend money here? Or we got this thing for you. Look at your bills when you get, obviously, when you get them. If you do these little things, you it's not that you don't have to worry. But the identity protection won't be a bill you have to pay because you're doing all that for it. And maybe LifeLock would have actually helped you clear it up if you did get it. But maybe. Knows? Because they have their their million dollar guarantee or whatever it is, I don't know. I I think they're probably one of the people also using military grade encryption, whatever oh, that yeah. means. Yeah, that's the, that's. I don't, so we always joke about what military grade encryption is because no one knows. It's the military uses this encryption. Uh, which military? We we don't know. We we know AES two fifty six is the standard. They should just say it. It uses this, so we know. Otherwise, we don't know what it's using. And when they say military grade, we the first question is, well, which one is it? That's not a secret. And we see that all the time. So military grade encryption generally means nothing or somebody's trying to sell you some ad copy. That is literally what it means. There's no technical details. There's no, like you know, standards body, the military encryption standards people. I mean, I guess there is a standards body. It's it's NIST. Uh, but like NIST is not going out to verify that, you know, Bob's house of encryption is actually offering the real military grade stuff. Uh, and if you've ever had a, a meal ready to eat or an MRE packet, I don't know if military grade is really the selling point you should be after. Um encryption is encryption right we we have standards we've got aes we have uh tls for over the wire transmissions right we've got uh asymmetric uh key encryption symmetric key encryption everybody uses the same stuff um and they do that for a reason it being military grade doesn't tell you anything it's just marketing bunk it's the marketers need to sell what they're paying the developers for but here's the problem encryption is very hard so I would I would be I would run away from a company with all the flashy marketing that says we care about your privacy. They have to prove that over the years. We st we talk about that. If a company says we care about it, well, how is it open? Is it open source? Did you have it audited? All these other things. So if they say we keep it's it's encrypted in transit, okay, but where is it not in transit? There's a whole lot of questions that we that we talk about. So make sure you are aware when you buy a product that military grade encryption just is completely meaningless, just with a lot of other stuff. And in fact, I would probably steer, steer away from it if that's what they're going to put at, at the top, at the top or the second bullet point. And yeah. finally, so um, and you know who has a lot of military grade encryption? Probably VPNs that claim to stop hackers in their tracks. We had a whole we had two shows on VPNs. We don't need to do much into it, but if your VPN is being sponsored on a YouTube video, they're spending more money on marketing. What we do urge you is to watch the last two shows on VPNs 
and that will go through all of it. But but when when a family member comes to you and says which VPN you want to do, for, stop what you're doing, send them our two shows, and say listen to this, put it on double speed, and you'll be fine. If you want to just short answer is who are you hiding from and and you need to hide from them and you're done yeah that's it if you really really want to buy a vpn like if you listen to the episodes if you've uh, figured out your use cases and your threat modeling um mulved mulved is kind of the the one that our experts have recommended um can't say our experts that the experts uh have recommended um and i've used them they're fine they're cheap enough and it seems to work just and fine. we're not going to spell it for you because i don't want any credit for recommending it because we also said if somebody's recommending it they're making money off it not going to do that so we are not making money off it i don't know if they take money i i don't know but our experts we have two episodes on this you should watch it i didn't know we could make money on this stuff what are we doing why am i wasting yeah. my time This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN or NordVPN. The uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, and granted, I haven't seen this in forever because I haven't had cable TV in forever. But if you or a family member was recommended a product through an infomercial on late night cable television, do not do it no matter what it is. It could be the best product in the world, and I will still tell you, just don't. Just, just don't. I probably don't need to say that anymore, but maybe we should expand that to like Facebook QVC ads, Twitter ads. QVC and Home Shopping Network, like they they and infomercials, they are a thing. Now QVC is a fine company. You want to do that, that's fine. But usually but if you see one of those late night things, get this doohickey and stick this in, it's the Bell and Howell comes to mind because I see a lot of their stuff it has military. It, it has a lot of military grade substance into it. Again, we we just spoke about this. Norton had a thing. It was like a router. It looked like like a geode that you get that you put on, and it had the five things, including LifeLock. Like it had all the things that we were talking about. It had LifeLock. It had a VPN. It had a virus scanning, and I and I'm sure it's fine. Like. They're not, not, it doesn't not work. It's just not something that any of you need to pay money for. So by the way, Apple has private relay. Google does. If you pay through Google one, they have their own weird proxy VPN. Okay. So they are doing it. All these companies want to keep your, Apple wants to keep your data safe. Google, I mean, wants to keep the data for them. They don't want to, they don't want to go anywhere else. Same with Facebook. They want to keep the data for themselves. So they don't want somebody else stealing it. So that's what they're working on. But if you see a product, I will say the only one I will recommend is the password notebook sheet. It's a, it's a little log that you see at the dollar store for a dollar or two dollars, whatever it is, you can get a password notebook. We do recommend that. Just lock that up. Like that, that's your password manager. That's fine. I know we get dunked on on it all the time, but do you, do you know what's not connected to the internet and not remotely hackable, at least not easily? A paper notebook sitting on somebody's desk. It's way better than passwords.doc or passwords.xls on somebody's desktop. Like, I would much rather have a, a loved family member write down their passwords in a password logbook and sit it on their desk than to write it in a text file somewhere on their computer in digital form. I mean, we still recommend the password manager, but that's what it is. And I've never seen Bitwarden advertise on late night TV. True. So I'm just I'm just pointing that out. Anyway, there are and these are the things that we hear all the time people saying. So we want to wrap up. It's it's Chrome, Google with Chrome and and Apple with Safari and everything learned all these things. They are learning how to because people are not going to pay for all this stuff. They're not going to pay for virus scanning. They're they're going to let it lapse and all this other stuff. We can argue that a phone should have more years of security services or this or that, but nobody's sitting here saying you should buy a virus scan or any of these. Google and Apple know this. So th what they're trying to do is they're trying to handle it in-house before it gets to you. Because if you have a poor customer, if you have a poor experience on a Chromebook, you're not going to buy another one. Same with a Mac, even Microsoft. They don't want you, I mean, they want you to pay them. They don't want you paying other people. 
you may hate your computer, but I think Windows even figured that out. Their stuff runs on really inexpensive hardware and it's really i mean it, it's perfectly fine so they need to make that easier nobody's calling you from microsoft tech support so so all these things just waste your time and waste your money so if again if it's too good to be true just don't get it and listen to us ask questions look in the forums we're here to help we're not going to charge you for it unless you want to pay us that's a different story but we're not taking money and, uh, and you should join our signal group, because if you are at all interested in the weird background noise you're hearing from my audio this episode, uh, I just got a 3D printer and I'm working on a 12 hour print. So I apologize, um, but we were running the show on a different day today. So anyway, with that said, I think we're over. But anyway, have a good night and we'll see everyone hopefully next week. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.